Uh, okay, exact differential equations. Now let's uh, go back to calc two or three. Well, let's see. So suppose we have this function fc of x y is zero and y is a function of x. And let's find the derivative with respect to x of this function, then this will be d dx 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 d dy dy So let's call this m x y and this one n x y. So this looks like m x y plus n x y. Either there is something like this here, or you might write this y prime. Okay, so. That is like implicit differentiation or well. Now, given this, you can find this easily. Now, given this, so we are given this. Fine. So that is what we should find, uh, that's an exact differential equation. If this differential equation comes from a function, which we call it a potential function, so if it comes from a potential function, but let's look at this and see uh, if we are given something like this, how do we know it comes from a potential function, uh, which means should I even uh, try to solve it, or I just say, okay, I cannot solve it using this method, say. Okay, now let's look at this, these two. So I have m x y, this is dc dx, and n x y is dc dy. So let's find the derivative of this with respect to y, so this gives me m, well, let's write the derivative here, so m of y means derivative with respect to y of this expression. On this side, I have d squared, d y dx, or dx dy, no difference. And this one, let's find the derivative with respect to x, m x, x y. And this is the same thing. Now, if we have a nice function, which we assume that we have a nice function, then these two should be equal. So, these two should be equal. As you can see, these two are the same. They are the same. So, this gives me m of y should be equal to n x x. So, so if this happens, we say that we have an exact differential equation and we solve it. And the sol uh, solving it is not that hard, but well, uh, I will do it in, uh, by giving you some examples. So, well, I can tell you how you do this. So, you are given this and this. So, you have, in fact, two differential equations. This one, you integrate, say, with respect to x, and then put it, put it here, and find, you will get some constants, and then you find those constants by 
uh, putting the exceed that you have found here in the second one. Okay, let me do my examples here again. So, first thing we have to check in this right? So, given this, first thing we check is this. So, equation looks like this. So if m, m go to the m, y, x, y equals n, x, x, y, then it is exact. Okay. So, so we have the saved by dx equals mxy so this gives me xc is xc of x and y is some uh, integral of the same with respect to x plus a constant and this constant should be a function of y you see with respect to x a function of y is a constant. So when you integrate, you leave a function of y here. And the second one is dx dy is nxy. So let's uh, plug in here. So this will be, well, this is something. So when you plug it here, plug this here, this whole thing, right? just substitute here and find f1. Okay, so that is the procedure. Now sometimes you start with mxy and sometimes nxy depending on which one is easier to integrate with respect to x and the other one with respect to y. So depending on the situation and I will give you some examples. Uh, some of them are, you can start here or here, no difference. And sometimes uh, you should start with this one, n. It's, it's easier to uh, use n first. Okay. So, first thing we have to check is that. So let me do some examples here. Example one. Okay. So first you identify the MX MXY and NXY. Uh, so this looks like MXY and oh gee, this is my square code. That's not right. And that is N. So what is multiplied by y prime is nxy and uh, the rest is mxy. So first thing first, is this true? So we have to check that. Is my xy equal to nx xy? Okay, let's check. My xy, this is derivative with respect to y. So this is zero, this is just two, one. Now this is derivative with respect to x, so two x, y derivative with respect to x is simply two, one, okay? So yes, it is like that. Okay. 
Then we say, okay, this uh, d x d x is m to x plus y squared. So integrate with respect to x, then x will be integrate with respect to x. This will be x squared plus, and this will be y squared x plus a function of y. That function of y can might be just a constant, uh, or it can be a function which has y some y in it. So, with respect to x, any function of y is acts like a constant. So this the derivative of this is zero with respect to x. Now, the second one is saying that the x dy is something. So let's find this thing. So d dy of this x squared plus y squared x plus uh, fy. And with respect to y will be 0 plus 2xy plus f prime y. Okay, and that is equal to uh, the second equation, that's 2xy. This one. That is nxy, so that is 2xy. Okay? <laughs> so, let me finish here. I don't want to erase this thing. So, this and this they cancel out, so this tells me that f prime y is zero, and this gives me that f prime f y is in fact a constant. Okay. So this guy here is just a constant, and I have a formula for x in y. So the x y is simply x squared plus y squared x plus a constant, and the equation is basically this equals zero. Fine. We need this to be equal to something. So this differential equation is for any expression like this. So any function of x and y like this uh, equals zero. So for different constants, you will get different answers. Okay? So let's do another one. And minus. I can double check the x. Y two x e y sine x x squared y. Okay. So, so this is the m x y, and this is n x y. So, so MXY and NXY, let's uh, do the check. So, M, Y, XY, derivative with respect to Y is simply cosine X, the 
plus 1. This one e to the power y is just e to the power y plus x e to the power y. And x, x, y will be derivative with respect to x. I have a cosine x. Derivative of this one with respect to x is uh, 2x e to the power y. Well, let me see if this might be 2x, right? No, so I, I misread this thing. It'll be 2 again. So this will be simply 2x. Okay, so. Yeah, if I have just x e to the power y, then it wouldn't be exact. Well, the, I dropped this 2, so this will be 2 here. Okay, and so equal, equal. It means the equation is exact. Okay. Oh, so if it's not exact and you start solving it, you will get into some trouble. Now, uh, I might give you an example, but let's see if I have time. I will do that. But uh, uh, always check. Unless you are told that it is exact, we know it is exact, so don't waste your time checking. So it's exact. Now let's. So this one is d c by dx equals y cosine x plus 2x e to the power y. So in, uh, integrate with respect to x, uh, this gives me x c, c x y is, well this is a constant, so this is like cosine x dx and that is sine x. So I have y sine x and this one is, uh, then this is like a constant, so 2x will be x squared e to the power y plus the function of y. Okay? So, now dx dy, the second one will be d dy of that expression. X, x squared e y plus f y and it should equal this so it equals the same sine x x squared e to the power y minus y okay there is a little bit respect to y this this is constant so this simply gives me sine x and there is a little bit respect to y e to the power y derivative is just e to the power y and f prime y. Uh, when I put prime and a function of one variable, it means the derivative is with respect to this variable. So that's like df dy. So, and on this side, I will write it. So this cancels and this one cancels. Now, if, if, the equation is not exact. Well, let, let's see. When you cancel out, you will get this. F prime y is 1 over oh, minus 1. F prime y is minus 1. Now, this minus 1 is a constant function. Constant function is a function of y. It's a function of anything. If the equation is not exact, if it is exact, on the right side, you will get you should get, or you will get, a function of y. So you might get y squared plus 3y, something like that, or a constant, or zero. If it's not exact, on the right side you will get a function which has both x and y. So if you see x on this side, and this is just a derivative with respect to y, then either check your calculations, maybe something is wrong, or check this, maybe it's not exact. If it's not exact, that might happen. Whatever, this is, uh, we checked that it was exact, and it didn't happen. Now, f prime y is minus 1, so it gives me that f y 
is minus y plus f plus f. So if y is minus y plus a constant, and that. Uh, so what happens? I should uh, substitute this one over there, and I have a formula for fc. So let me erase this here, and this gives me fc xy is y sine x plus x squared dy minus y plus c will be equal to So that is an expression in both x and y. And for different c, we have different answers. Okay. Now, well, uh, like, uh, I mean, differential equations like this are simple. And as you see, the solution is just straightforward. Most often students make mistakes when they def integrate the first ones, like here they integrate and they come up with something wrong. So you have to practice your integration. And I'm not talking about just that, I mean, some fancy function that you need integration by something, something. No, but just at least try to remember the simple ones. And uh, like for example, the antiderivative of cosine x. If you mistakenly write minus sine x over there, then everything goes wrong. So you have to practice your integration. Uh, other than that, uh, there is really nothing. It's just straightforward and just find that and plug in and then, and then find that constant f y. Okay, let me do another one, which I guess uh, needs the second one to be integrated. Let me see. The case of I move to my else here. Well, let's just. Yeah, that, that, that's a perfectly good example. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. So, example three. Yeah, this is a good example. So this is ah, oh, 3xy plus y squared, so it is a 3xy plus y squared plus, and this uh, x squared plus xy, y prime, x squared plus xy, y prime is zero. Uh, suppose uh, we forget to check that. So, and we just start solving it. And we say, okay, I know that dx D, should be this first one. And this gives me xc of x of y. Is, okay, this is with respect to x, so this will be 3 over 2 x squared y plus y squared x plus a function of y, g y, or f y. Okay, now derivative with respect to y will be 3 halves x squared uh, plus 2 y x uh, plus g prime of y, and that should equal this, x squared plus x y. Okay, so g prime y is what? Uh, 3 halves, uh, uh, there's a 1 here, so it's a minus 1 half x squared, and this one will give me minus y x. Right? Okay, well, so I have a function which is just a function of y. Its derivative with respect to y has x in it. So what happened? This you cannot solve it. You cannot solve it. What went wrong? We forgot to 
Let's check. Fix. All right, let's drop the X1. So we forgot to check this. So if you start solving and you get a point like this, this should be just a function of y. So this should be just a function of y. So if you get a function on the right side here, which is not a function of y, then either your calculation is wrong or you didn't check this. So if you check this and it's correct, it satisfies this equation, then something is wrong here. So you made a mistake in finding the antiderivative. Okay, so let's check. Let's check and see if uh, they are equal or they are not. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. So m, y, this is m, with respect to y is a 3x plus 2y, and x is 2x plus 1, right? 2x plus 1, let me do that again. They are not equal. And y is not equal to mx. The equation is not exact. Okay. So the equation is not exact and if you if if I check that at the beginning, I wouldn't go through all this, so I would just stop. I would stop and say, okay, it's not exact, so we cannot solve it like this. And even if we try, we will hit this, and that can't be because that's just a function of y. And on the right side, I have x and y. Okay, so that that was a good example that this equation is not exact. Is it didn't satisfy this so. Let me see if I can find a, a one that needs integration with respect to the second one. So let's just, but remember, sometimes you have to, just, if you try to find the antiderivative of m, and you see it's too hard, so it's like um, e to power x cosine x, so integral of e to power x cosine x needs two uh, integration by parts, twice, I mean two steps, so Look at the second one. Maybe the second one is easier. So the second one will be you start with n. So you have d x c d uh, y is n x y. So this uh, gives you this thing x y is this with respect to y this time. And now we have a function of x. In that. So the constant is a function of x. The constant in this situation is the function of x. And then you try this in the second one. So, I mean, the first one, in fact, yeah. d dx is d dx of this guy here. And this gives you something, something plus a g prime x. And that equals mx1. And this should give you g prime x is just a function of x. If it's exact, and they just integrate or find the antiderivative, so it will give you gx is something. And usually you end up with a constant. Don't forget the constant. Okay, so if when you are solving or when you try the first one and you uh, 
cannot, oh, you not cannot, well, you can integrate e to power x cosine x, but you need, that's a lot of work. But if you look at the second one, it is much, much easier. So, so that is in fact uh, some kind of, uh, some like a hint. I usually look at both of them and, and uh, well, I'm an experienced teacher, so I know which one, the integral of which one with respect to say x and y is simpler. But anyway, so don't just start with x and say, yeah, I should start with the first one. No, sometimes you have to start with the second one. Okay, so that is all. Now, if you are given an initial condition or some condition, so the condition might be something like this, that yeah, it's a, it's a, if you see that some a and b, is uh, something, some, let's say five. So that's like condition given to you. So if a condition like this is given to you, then you just plug in A, B for X and Y. So this is your X and this is your Y equal five, and then it gives you the constant. So you might be given some constant uh, with some initial condition or some condition on xc, fc, and then using that you can find the constant. Okay, so that was uh, section 2.7. Uh, uh, well, there is, uh, I guess, not too much left from this chapter, so let me Finish it. So this is for first order differential equation. So you are given the y dx is some function of a value like t here, because it will be t. So this is dy dv say is a function of t and y or y and t. And the y at some t0 is given. So we are we should be given some initial condition because we are finding an exact, uh, I mean, specific solution for this initial condition. Okay, so to understand this, we have to look at uh, this equation here carefully, dy dt. So what is it? So if I can find y, let's say I have found y, and so I find y of t, the function, the solution, and it, well, this is in the t-axis, the t-axis and the y-axis, so at point T0, it is Y0. Okay, so it's telling me that dy dt equals something. What is dy dt? dy dt is slope of tangent line. And it gives me a slope of tangent line for different points on the curve. So slope of this one, slope of this one, the tangent line at t0, y0. So this is dy dt for t0, y0. But I have a formula for dy dt. So in fact, this 
equals f of t0 y0. So So if I plug in t0 and y0 in on the right hand side, the function given on the right hand side, I will get slope of the line tangent to this curve. And we know by linear approximation to nice and differentiable functions that this tangent line, in fact, the tangent line, in fact, is a good approximation in a neighborhood of that t0, the point on the t-axis. So one might say, okay, why not uh, taking this to be the function? So we don't have the function, we cannot find it, it's highly nonlinear, we don't know how to do it. But we can find this tangent lines very easy. We know point T0, Y0, and we know the slope, and uh, that's all. So just use slope intercept or slope of that and formula from ecology algebra and find equation of that line. And that equation gives me the, it approximates the solution uh, in some small label of T0. But then we can continue this way. We can continue this way and for, uh, say we start here and we just go some delta t to the right or left, whatever. And at this point again, we want to approximate this. But we don't know this one. So we hit this point. We hit this point. Now this point has a t, which is t0 plus delta t, and it has a y. And the y of this point is the y at t0 plus delta t, right? That is y at t0 plus delta t. But then again, we know, no, well, this, this is not y, in fact. This is, in fact, the the y that comes from, uh, let me just put something here. This is in fact the y of the tangent line. So instead of choosing, instead of, we don't know this point, but we know this point because that's on the tangent line. So we can find that point on the tangent line. So we stick with that point on the tangent line. This is the real y. This is in fact y of t0 plus delta t. But we stick with this one because we don't know this one. We stick with the other one, which is some boy hat, so that is the equation of the line. Now, for these two values, this t and this uh, y hat, we can find slope again using this formula. So, for this one, we find slope, so this one gives me another slope and then another tangent line. So, uh, this one, in fact, slope is y, d, t, at what point? Point is uh, this point, t0 plus delta t, and what point for y, y hat of t0 plus delta t. Now, you can find the equation of the y hat. Remember from college algebra, equation of a line that goes through uh, this point, so uh, that is something like this. So we have y hat minus the y of this point, y0, is m times uh, t minus t0, t minus t0. So this is y hat, is m, m is what? m is f of x0, y0 times t minus t0 plus y0. So this is y hat in fact. Just plug in uh, for this t, this t, and you have y hat. No, well, let's, let's find it. In fact, it has a nice formula. This y hat will be 
f of x0, y0, say, t minus t0, t minus t0 is delta t, delta t plus y0. So, that's y hat. Now, for this y, t0, y, and y hat, you find dy dt, and you continue this way, and uh, until you reach a point that is uh, required. So, for example, if you want to find the value of the function, because that's how it works, so they say find the value of the function at t equals 5, say. So you continue this way and you find this, this approximation, and at t equals 5, this is your approximate value. And remember, that approximate value is on those tangent lines. Uh, it's, well, if you choose delta t uh, small enough, then it, it is very close to the real solution. So, now, instead of writing this in like, uh, like a big mess here, we can write it down in a very nice table. So let me show you how to do it in uh, tabular form. So, so what you have to do first, uh, first is uh, write this as a difference equation. So that is delta y, delta t equals f t uh, t y, say. And this gives me delta y is f t y times delta number two, choose time step delta t, and number three, just use the given thing, use the table. Now, the table, I mean, something that I will give you, just by, with an example here. <laughs> okay, so, we'll use tabular method, whatever you call it, anyway. So, let's just try some uh, simple example. Let me erase this and a simple example. So uh, let's say dy dt is a simple one because I don't have a calculator, so let's say it is y plus x. And we say that y at point, say, 0 is the uh, same. And uh, find y3. Okay? Find y3. Okay, so what was number 1? Write this as delta y is y plus x delta t of g. This should be t, right? And, x. and then number two is delta t. So we start at zero and end at three. If you know how to program in Python or whatever programming, you can write a simple program to do that for you. Now, I don't have a calculator here with me. So let's choose what, what do you expect? So let's see, we have zero and then we need this at three. And so let's divide it by one, two. So let's take delta t to be uh, one. Okay, so let's say delta t is one. It's not always one, but, but for simplicity, we just take one. And now the table. Now, the table in this case is very simple. So, the table looks like this. So, we have t here, and t here, y here, and delta y, which is y plus t. So t starts at 0, then t plus delta t will be 0 plus 1 equals 1, then 0 plus, or not 0, 
1 plus 1 is 2, and uh, 2 plus 1 is 3. So y is 2. Okay. So delta y here for this 0 and 2 will be delta y is 2 plus 0 times 1. Delta t is 1. So that is 2 plus 0, 1. And this will be just 2. Now we bring this 2 down here and add it to this. Well, uh, why should I want to choose something else? So we don't get confused what's going on. Let's write two from five. So you can. But then when you look at it, you think something is wrong. So add to this. So I have 2.5 plus delta y, that's 2, and that is 4.5. Okay. Now delta y in this situation is, again, y plus t, y is 4.5 plus t is 1 and delta t, which is uh, 5 point five point five. So we bring it back here, 4.5 plus 5.5, and that is in 510. Okay. And delta y here, again, is uh, 10 plus this 2 times 1, which is 12, that's 12, right? and uh, then bring this down, 10 plus 12 is 20, and that's it. So we just say that y at 0, uh, sorry, y at uh, 3 is approximately is 20. Now, what is the exact solution? Well, let's try exact solution. We know how to solve this. It's not hard. So, this exact solution so that's a simple ddt minus y equals t, right? So, mu t is e to power. Uh, integral minus 1 dt, so that's e to the power negative t. And uh, so y t will be 1 over e to the power negative t times integral t e to the power negative t plus a constant. So t e to the power negative t will be what? Uh, that's, uh, let, let me try, oh, I can hear this. So, so that is t e to the power negative t dt, that is integral t times minus d of e to the power negative t, so that's minus t e to the power negative t minus integral. Uh, So uh, that is plus, so it will be minus t e to the power negative t, and that's plus again minus e to the power negative t. So that is without the constant, the constant is already here. So y t will be uh, 1 over e to the power negative t times minus t e to If I apply this thing, uh, I will get 
this divided by e to the power minus t, that is minus t simply, and this one is minus 1 plus c e to the power t divided. Now y at 0 is 2.5, so y at 0 is minus 1 plus c, that is 2.5, so c is in fact uh, 2.5, 3.5. So the exact solution is y t is minus t minus 1 plus 3.5 e to the power t. Okay. And I want uh, y at 3, and that's minus 3 minus 1 plus 3.5 e to the power 3. I, I don't know what that is, you can check at home and just uh, look at that approximate value and see how good it is. But it's not, it shouldn't be that good because delta t is too large. If you choose delta t to be 0.1, for example, you will get a much better approximation. But anyway, this was a simple problem. It, uh, can, you can solve it easily, uh, but sometimes that, uh, if I had like a function that was, uh, wouldn't give you anything like this here, then uh, yeah, I couldn't do anything. So, then uh, Euler method would help you a lot. Okay, so that was the two sections, and uh, see you next time.